Okay, seems to be working now. So, well, as always, welcome everyone to this new edition of the Unity Community Hours. We hope you have a really great summer, all things considered, with, of course, with the COVID situation. The agenda for today is this one. So I'm going to briefly present what are the new things for Unit 2021-09. And then Frankie will be presenting the bootstrapping of Ansible clients. So let's get to it. Before we start uh, talking about 2021-09, there we had some reports this morning about people telling us that some after updating to 2021-09, some of the packages at the server were not updated. They were just kept as pending. If you hit this issue, then do not worry. You can check this link. I sent the announcement to Twitter, mailing list, the, the website, and everywhere else. It's a problem that is going to be fixed on OpenSUSE Elite 15.3. But for now, on that issue, 4244, there is the workaround that you can safely apply, and everything will work as expected. And of course, if this is not fixed in time for the next two unit release 2021-10, I will make it part of the release notes. With that said, we have quite a few new things. So first of all, now Prometheus and Ansible are both available at the unit proxy and at the retail branch server, meaning you can monitor from them and you can control other clients with Ansible without having a separate instance only for that. But be aware, of course, that both services will consume extra resources and you will need to assign probably to, this, to the proxies more resources. So for example, you know that, that with Ansible, that means that Ansible will need to open SSH connections and then Prometheus will consume some more CPU, RAM, etc. So remember to plan. Then we have a few improvements for the AppStream web UI. Now the project page is going to provide app streams with a, a default filter template. And you can use this template to create a module filter for each module in that repository. And you can also specify the default stream for each module. Some more web UI improvements for the data, data time handling. Now we are using the standard format from Ian and I don't really remember what the acronym stands for, but IANA, which is used almost everywhere with one notable exception, which is the admin menu that will be ported later. And of course, if you find any other place where we didn't modify this, then please feel free to report it, uh, report it as, as a new unit bug or issue on the repository. Then, as some of you know, for the last maybe two, three weeks, there were some problems syncing the Appel repositories because now they are including a new advisory status on the patch information pending that was not recognized by UUNI. That is fixed now, so every repository using this new advisory status will work just fine again. For the virtualization, now the virtual machines can be created and edited if they need UF, UFI. And there is also something else new, which is that um, now we have templates for bit for bit tuner when you create a virtual machine. However, for for now, that is only available for the next SLE 15 version, which is going to be a SP4, and for OpenSUSE Elite 15.4. So it will take a while until you can take advantage of this new thing. Then for Space EMD, we have two new subcommands that will allow you to archive all the completed actions older than a given date or to delete all the archive actions older than a given date. And finally, this is also important for Cobbler, we have an update that is fixing a remote code execution at the XML RPC API. And 
it's fixing some other CVs as well. And as always, of course, you can find all the details at the release notes that you can check at the server itself after you update or at the website as well uh, in HTML format. And those are the news for now. So, well, we have time for some questions uh, and answers if you have anything you want to ask. So on the inclusion of those uh, Prometheus and Ansible packages for the proxy server, um, <clears throat> previously you had to sort of cheat and add the, the SUSE manager tools channel to that in order to get those, right? Well, uh, for SUSE manager, yes. For Uni, you could still add the Uni client tools. Let's say, for example, you wanted, uh, well, no, no, the proxy is always SD15. SP, uh, sorry, OpenSUSE lib 15.3. So yes, if you wanted Ansible and Prometheus on that Uni proxy, you had to add the Uni client tools for OpenSUSE lib 15.3 which is not supported. Now you right, don't need right. to cheat anymore. What <laughs> I didn't mention is that, of course, neither Ansible or Prometheus are installed by default, okay? If you want them, you need to install them. And they're delivered in what channel? Is that in the proxy channel? Yes. Now okay. it is part for units, part of the proxy product definition. And well, for SUSE manager, yes, it's part of the proxy channel. Okay. Thanks. I mean, it makes sense. So, I mean, if you're thinking about how you're going to deliver Prometheus, Prometheus having it at a proxy level means that my client systems can then report to that locally available proxy, right? I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense because in the end, let's think that, for example, you want to use the proxy in an office, which is separated from the main HQ or something like that. And this way you can have a single instance delivering the updates and getting the reports for Prometheus that you can then federate with other Prometheus if you want, as you know, or you can con control them with Ansible. And to do that now you only need the proxy and you don't need an extra instance. Okay, more questions or comments or suggestions? If not, then I think it is time to see if the screen sharing is working correctly for Frankie. So let me stop presenting and uh, you can give it a try, Frankie. All right, so you should see my screen right now. Yes, it's working. And if anything goes wrong during the presentations, just tell me uh, because the line here is not really thick and I would need to uh, switch to 4G, but yeah, let's hope that everything is going to be all right. Uh, if not, then yeah, as I said, just uh, just tell me and I will hopefully hear that. So um, this uh, presentation is about the, um, the new Ansible edition. Um, I don't have any slides. I only have the um, feature prepared for you. And um, yeah, um, so recently we introduced some, uh, some Ansible integration, like in the last uh, months. Uh, but we are trying to uh, improve this feature even more. And uh, the, the last edition that uh, hasn't been merged yet, but should be uh, merged um, fairly soon. Uh, it's been on review for some time right right now. So um, it's about uh, bootstrapping Ansible uh, systems. So imagine that you have, uh, you have your Ansible infrastructure. And um, here I just prepared one, one system that is um, Ansible control load, as you can see here. Um, we go here uh, and we just take a look at the inventory that we have here um, and we introspect uh, sorry we intros introspect this inventory um, it's going to take a while um, here you can see that, um, that the inventory contains two systems and one has been already registered in Zusa manager as the salt minion and the other one which is this minion uh, dash two um, it's um, it's in the Ansible inventory, but uh, Zusa Manager is not aware of this, so it's 
it's not a salt minion. Uh, so what you can do now is that uh, with, with the new feature, you can just click the bootstrap, uh, bootstrap button and uh, uh, you can easily bootstrap this, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, client, uh, which is not salt minion yet, but you can easily bootstrap it using, using the very known um, the manager feature here uh, without providing any authentication. So you here you can see uh, some 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 new stuff, and this radio button tells that the um, that the minion is going to be pre-authenticated uh, using the Ansible uh, during the bootstrapping. So you don't need to fill in any password, any private key. Um, the the authentication during the bootstrap is handled in a transparent way by Ansible. So um, now you can see everything should be uh, pre-filled according to the information we get uh, from Ansible. So let's just try to bootstrap it. Let's hope that it works uh, works now. Um, so after after some uh, some moments, we should see that uh, that the system will be bootstrapped. Let's just give it a, uh, give it some seconds. While oh, we wait, I guess. Time. Yeah, but that's normal. Don't worry. don't worry. It doesn't mean it is going to fail. Sometimes bootstrapping takes uh, takes a while, a couple of minutes. So while we wait, I guess that since you can do this from the web UI, you have API calls to do it as well. Uh, well, since the feature has been written by me like two months ago, I don't remember if I, if I wrote the uh, the XML counterpart, uh, XML or APC counterpart. I think I did. But uh, I will I will verify after uh, after the presentation. It's it's really been some some time and uh, yeah honestly I uh, after my vacation I uh, I kind of forget. So anyway, you can see that the bootstrap has been successful and really you can see the uh, the minion uh, bootstrap into the manager like uh, as if you were bootstrapping it uh, in in a normal way. So um, yeah, but but this time it was it was uh, the the, the uh, authentication was via Ansible. Uh, so you would need to carry about uh, care about uh, about uh, the authentication, and that's basically it. That's what I wanted to show you today. Are there any questions? Yeah, I have a question. <clears throat> so it's not making any judgment um, from reading the inventory about what operating system that ansible uh that ansible client in the in the inventory is running so does it does susan or uh, uni care uh if it if if in fact that system is not supported by uni or can't mm -hmm. like if it's a windows system or something like that right. i mean i could still use ansible to execute playbooks but registering it would necessarily probably fail right yeah that's true and that's a valid point uh so of course you can only bootstrap such systems that are like bootstrapable by uh, by uni slash as a manager yeah and and uh so we're dependent on the person who's clicking on that button to to know that right mm -hmm. yeah that's true that's true I mean, we are not trying to push anybody to uh, to to really make use of this feature, but it should be it should be um, providing an easy way to to uh, to bootstrap supported clients. Um, as, as oh yeah, millions. and I totally but, I totally like it. I mean, I think it's it's helpful because we don't we're not trying to make Uyuni into the next Ansible Tower, right? Mm, right. Well, at <laughs> least I don't think so at the moment. But <laughs> but I'm not I'm not the right person to answer this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I get you. Uh, I mean, this is totally valid point. Um, I'm not really sure how much information about the the running operating system we have. Well, of course we have we 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 can basically run anything via Ansible. So uh, maybe there would be some uh, some way to discover like which uh, which operating system is uh, is the machine running um uh, but yeah, yeah really, I, I don't even, i don't really know about maybe that even do i 
I mean, and, and I guess the secondary level would be, and I noticed in your demo, you don't have any channel subscriptions for software channels, but do I, do I even have channels replicated for that operating system, oh. right? Well, the reason you are not seeing any channels here, it's... Um, you didn't use activation keys, right? I don't have any channels. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I don't have any. I just have this channel. But uh, um, the, the, way, um, the way this should be seen is that uh, it's, it's like um, the very same thing that you, uh, you have here under the bootstrapping, but with pre-authentication. So, uh, well, you can, you can um, just select none when you are bootstrapping well then it, i think that then then it it would try to assign the channels according to the product and of course you can use uh, you can also use activation channel uh, if you have any um sorry activation key if you have any channels assigned to this one and that of course will will uh will assign the, the channels um, assigned and to the activation works, key and that works even if the ansible client is the authentication method right yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's just uh, it, it's it's completely um, isolated thing. It's just uh, the pre -authent pre authentication. You can imagine it as a as if the um, as if the manager um, the manager SSH uh, public key is copied uh, prior to the authentication to the uh, to the target system using Ansible. Right, right. So uh, it's implemented in in, in this way. Yeah, but uh, I will definitely take uh, take uh, down this note about uh, about uh, supported operating systems. I think that this is a really really good uh, uh, good remark. Uh, the other question is uh, how much can we do about that? We will see. Looks like you got a hand raised there. Yep. So just oh, go ahead I, and I, ask. No problem. Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, the call for me. Hi, uh, first of all, thank you very much for this really great product. Um, we are very interested in uh, using Ansible and uh, I'm curious about the authentication methods if we have an Ansible uh, control node. Um, so is there any information about how this would be done? The I don't, I don't want to say the best way, but uh, which ways are there because uh, in fact I will create a system that is uh, authenticated to log into yeah a whole bunch of other systems and so that's, this is a very uh, critical security thing and uh, we are really curious about how you would uh, suggest do, to do this uh, which authentication uh, methods uh, within Ansible Oh yeah, I think that I I think that I lost the last part, which authentication methods, and then I didn't hear the rest. Yeah. So how does the Ansible control node log into all the other Ansible clients? Uh, well, it's it depends on the um, it depends on the inventory. Um, well, let me just go here. So this is the Ansible control node. This is the uh, the. the um, the 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 Ansible system that sees the other other systems, and um, well then you have. Wait, uh, wait a minute, for... Frankie, because at least I cannot still see the control node. I oh. still see the Bootstrap Minions web page. No, okay. I'm seeing That's it. Maybe ah, then it's my problem. Go ahead. It's Sorry. your your problem. <laughs> okay, uh, so I well then then. Uh, it it uses the authentication method in the uh, defined in the in the inventory. So, for instance, in this inventory, I have a authentication method which is defined by my um, SSH key. So, basically, what whatever the Ansible would be using for authenticating uh, with the with the target system, in this case, it was Minion two. It, it uses uh, the same authentication method is used by the manager for for this uh, pre authentication or this pre bootstrapping step. Okay, so uh, in this case, you have a private public key pair, and the uh, private key uh, is lying on the control node, and with this key, exactly. you have access to many other systems. 
-hmm. So if someone gets access to the control node, he gets access to that key and uh, with this key can access all the other nodes. Sure, but yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a, and that's an Ansible like a, design. That's not, yeah, 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 yeah sure. That's ultimately, not it's a SSH design, design, right? Yeah, um, yeah ultimately, was, it's SSH design. Uh, I was just thinking about maybe you uh, thought that, hey, we have a SUSE manager or a uni that can authenticate to uh, at least the SALT uh, systems. So maybe uh, you, th you are already thinking about a way to. Uh, combine these authentications. So uh, Ansible is using uh, the uh, SUSE manager or uni authentication method somehow. Well, uh, the problem is that the, the system that you want to bootstrap is not a uh, salt minion at all. So it's uh, basically there is the only authentication that you can use is either this existing Ansible one. But if you if you uh, find it uh, insecure for some reason, you can still bootstrap this system. Let's say that the system has uh, is, is not here; it's, it hasn't been bootstrapped. But you can just bootstrap it using the normal uh, Zusa Manager bootstrapping procedure, in which you can use, for instance, password. Um, totally, um, I'm fine with this. I'm, I'm just thinking about after bootstrapping. So uh, uh, imagine you have an, uh, a registered uh, client in Uyuni and you want to uh, do some Ansible stuff with this client, um, then maybe uh, there can be a way in the future that you don't have to put an, uh, a key on the Ansible control node, but you can uh, say from Uyuni, hey, um, do this Ansible stuff and uh, use uh, Uyuni authentication for this somehow. I don't know, maybe. Mm, but okay, well, I... I yeah, would say okay. then you, you. I would say then you solve for this uh, because uh, yeah, I mean this is the what what Uni Uni does. Um, I'm not sure about um, like I, I don't even know if uh, Ansible has some kind of pluggable authentication mechanism that supports uh, supports some other ways. Maybe it does, uh, but at this point um, I, I I really don't know. And if there is really concrete use case behind this. Uh, uh, and uh, there are like people or customers that uh, could benefit from this. Well, then, uh, then, then we can definitely think about it. Okay, so thank you very much for uh, for these answers. Um, we will see in the future how this will uh, develop. Still, for now, if what worries you is that someone accessing the control node will have access to all absolutely all the instances managed by that control node. Well, I'm not the most familiar person with Ansible at all, but I think you could just use different controllers to control different sets of instances. So in that case, you can use different, key, different keys for each set of instances, and at least you would limit the damage if any of the control nodes uh, gets compromised. OK. And of course, all the control nodes can be part of uh, Uyuni, managed by Uyuni. Yeah, I must think about some uh, security uh, concerns, maybe uh, to uh, put uh, private keys to the control nodes only for a time span where I do need them, or uh, maybe rolling keys that are distributed every week or every day or whatever. We will see in the future how this will develop. Yeah, thanks, Frankie. This is really, really helpful, I think. Yeah, I have one question, Frankie. When do you, when do we mm -hmm. plan to roll this out? Maybe for Is it going to be in 2021-10 or when? <laughs> um, I have no idea. I mean, uh, the, 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 I, I, can, I can tell you that the, the feature or the pull request is going to be merged rather soon, like uh, within time span of weeks. I'm not sure when uh, the next uh, next term for Union release is scheduled. This is more a question for Julio. I mean, if we just merge, supposing that we just merge the pull request in two weeks, uh, when could we um, when could we um, find this feature in Union, Julio? Well, we don't have a. We, um, okay, I'm not muted, right? You can still hear me, I hope. Yep.
Okay, good. So we don't have a fixed calendar for the releases of uni. Where we release when we are ready, but usually, yeah, during the last months, we usually release at the end of the month or at least in the second half of the month. And whatever is merged at that point is what gets released. So I would say that maybe, yeah, this thing will get included into 2021. 10, but we will see. No promises. Okay, thank you. Okay, then if there are no more questions, I guess we can conclude. I wanted to um, check one thing that I completely forgot, but at the beginning of the presentation, yeah, there was a question about the XML RPC, right? Yes. Yeah, I asked if we have uh, an API, API call to, to do this without using the web UI. Right, it's a valid question and let me quickly check the pull request. I hope that you cannot see my screen because I, for, <laughs> I, I uh, turned off the... I mean, no, there is now, nothing, we, now we see teams, don't worry. Yeah. Okay, I mean, there is nothing nothing uncomfortable here. It just, uh, uh, it just, uh, yeah, I, 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 um, uh, it's, it's not interesting. Uh, so we have, it seems that the XML RPC is not in the scope of the pull request. Um, no, for some reason there is no code in XML RPC. So I will. Okay, um, I don't want to do any quick conclusions here. Uh, maybe I'm not up to date at this moment. Uh, but yeah, I will definitely check it once more, and um, um, I will make sure that XML RPC is also included. Thank you very much. Okay, so if we don't have more questions for this section, then we are off to the last section of this uni community hours, which is, well, you, the community can ask pretty much everyone, everything that you want to ask or comment or suggest for next sessions of the community hours or for uni itself, whatever comes to your mind, Feel free to ask or comment. We still have like half an hour if we want to discuss anything else. Is this of the is this of the record or is this still recorded? No, this is still recorded. Oh. But you know, sometimes people from the community wants to ask something that is not in the scope of the of the agenda, and that is perfectly fine. But it, we, if we don't have anything else, then yeah, it's not a problem. We will just stop the community hours for today here. And all that's left for me is wishing you a very, very nice day and weekend ahead. We will see you at the last Friday of next month, October. And then, of course, meanwhile, that as always, you can contact us via the uni github issues gitter mailing list etc so thank you very much for attending thank you very much for the presentation frankie and see you soon thank you very much thanks a lot thank for you, your Leo. patience and also for the feedback thanks a lot yeah thanks everybody thank you everyone thanks everyone bye all right bye bye, bye, -bye. Have a nice weekend bye bye